Ladies and gentlemen, it is with a sad heart, no pun intended here, that we mark the 20th anniversary of the passing as probably one of the most talented wrestlers in world history and maybe the most talented from the incomparable Hart family of Stampede Wrestling. Owen Hart's passing during a WWE pay-per-view at uh, a stunt gone bad 20 years ago today still remains a, a sore spot for Canadians and wrestling fans throughout the globe. Now, uh, he died in Kansas City, Missouri uh, while trying to attempt a rappelling stunt into the ring and unfortunately the harness broke and he fell to his death. This was during a uh, WWE pay-per-view and uh, Jim Ross, the incomparable announcer, was forced to uh, tell the the viewers at home and uh, the people in in the uh, stadium that uh, Owen had passed. Now what happened, he suffered internal bleeding from blunt force trauma. There was very little they could do for him, he almost died instantly. But Owen Hart to uh, a generation of wrestling fans who are, are growing up now, uh, he remains a legend because Owen Hart was that good. Uh, from his uh, early years in independent federations to being one of the top cruiserweights or light heavies in the game, he basically changed the way that the Hart family was perceived by the international wrestling community. His uh, famous brothers and family members, including uh, Bret Hart and his brother-in-law, Davy Boy Smith, his brother-in-law, Jim Neidhart, and Brian Pillman made the greatest uh, Canadian uh, group of wrestlers ever. Uh, kind of a, a second version of the Hart Foundation. He was part of probably the one of the greatest uh, legacies in Canadian wrestling history, which include, of course, uh, Chris Benoit, uh, all the great Canadian wrestlers that looked up to Owen. Owen's style was, was that of a ballet dancer in the ring. He could do any move, he could do any swerve, he could be a face, he could be a heel. Great on the mic, great storyteller. Uh, great overall presence and for him to die in such unsuccessful of a, of a moment where basically for the last 20 years we're still looking for him every wrestler that's coming up they could have used Owen Hart as a mentor the unfortunate incidents with Eddie Guerrero and Chris Benoit can be directly linked to uh, Owen's death the amount of lack of respect that uh, Vince McMahon and the McMahons have for wrestlers throughout the years can be directly linked to this. All the blood of Owen Hart's death is on Vince McMahon's hands, in my opinion. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care if he tries to sue me. He didn't protect his wrestlers, and Owen was one of them. And Owen died because he was willing to take the chance to do a repelling stunt with his Blue Blazer character. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much in depth how much of... Uh, how many belts Owen won and how many successful matches he had because it'd be too countless. But Owen, of get this, ladies and gentlemen, was only uh, a kid when he started. And he was only a kid when he died. He died at age 34, which was my age in 1999. Can you imagine being 34 years old and being already considered one of the greatest wrestlers of all time and one of the greatest Canadian athletes of all time? He left to mourn his beautiful uh, spouse, Martha Hart, and his two great children. But uh, all of Canada, especially those who followed the Hart Foundation from Quebec to the Maritimes, to out west, to BC, to across the globe, Owen Hart was everybody's kind of uh, hope for the future where wrestling could take it to the next level. The void Owen Hart has left has never and will never, ever be filled. Because how do you fill the void left by a legend who died so unnecessarily. It was almost like he was murdered on TV. That's what's the feeling. When I had to cover uh, the Owen Hart death for my paper uh, in Camelton, the Camelton Tribune in my column, I couldn't even, I, I, I couldn't even imagine how he even died in the first place. You gotta understand, 1995 to about 2000 was a glory year for wrestling. ECW was doing well. WCW was feuding with WWE, the night, Monday Night Wars. Money was good. A lot of uh, Japanese and Mexican and international wrestlers were coming in. It was a glory time. And this was the unofficial end to that time because no one has ever looked at 
the rustling since then and the Benoit case is also does people you say all oh, rustling's fake well this was real man Owen Hart was real he was a real man doing a real job and representing a real country when Eric Bischoff criticized us in his book saying Canada wasn't a real country Eric Bischoff I don't care who you are you can go fuck yourself okay for you and other people to think that wrestling is not real in Canada that Canada is not a real country we grew up watching wrestling we grew up developing wrestling besides hockey that's who we are and for Vince McMahon to kill one of our native sons uh, in, in a, not say deliberately of course but he never protected these wrestlers as many wrestlers have been damaged over the years Owen was willing to do it because he was a workman like guy he was a nice guy and the ribs he did and, and the humor he left throughout the years there's still uh, there's still memories and I, I think back of Bret Hart's induction uh, Bret's uh, handsome brother who I met who I have great respect for and uh, doing a rib uh, talking about Stuart uh, Owen doing a Stu Hart, his father's impersonation of different people, you know, uh, hey, you know, you, uh, hey, hey, I don't really like you, you know, uh, and that all joy we had was gone because, yes, we had the screw job in 97, uh, uh, against uh, Brett, sure, you know, uh, Brett left the WWE, but I mean, you know, we didn't think anybody was going to later die over such a, a swerve or a kayfabe, anyway. So if you have a chance, read up on Owen Hart. There's many books out there talking about the history of wrestling. A lot of his YouTube matches are still out there. But Owen Hart, if Owen Hart would have lived for the last 20 years, wrestling would be at such a high level just because of his. He was being, being groomed for world champion. Uh, he had won numerous belts and numerous recognitions. There might be a, an all-Canadian wrestling federation. You look at a, uh, AEW and all these international federations, even if he would have been retired from WWE, he would have been wrestling. Uh, he could have went into politics. He could have went into music. He could have went into acting. Owen Hart was that good. He was a Renaissance wrestler. That's even possible to say. But I uh, I want to dedicate this podcast to all my friends in wrestling, uh, from Von Taggart to through the uh, with the Wrestling Federation and Prescott Crown of Maine to uh, Carla Duke, uh, one of the Hard Dungeon graduates with the uh, FLQ Wrestling in Quebec to the Leduc family, to René Dupre, to all the people that, uh, Rain Ravens, all the people I've uh, dealt with with wrestling over the years. There's a piece of Owen Hart in everybody in this nation. 36 million people, everybody has a piece of Owen Hart. Whether you know it or not, because once you read about Owen Hart, once you learn about him, he was a true Canadian in every shape or form. So on his anniversary, Owen, we're thinking about you. Rest in peace, brother. And, uh, you know, um, I really, really think that wrestling is less of a, of a, it's less corporate than it's been. It's not as, uh, what do you call, uh, you know, Shawn Michaels style than it was, but still, there's a void in wrestling, and the void is Owen Hart. You can't fill it. You can't go back in time, and you have to basically say, you know, God bless to everybody, because if you're a wrestler, it's not easy, and Owen Hart proved that, unfortunately. So on this uh, Thursday in New Brunswick, we're starting to warm up. It's around 20 Celsius today, beautiful day. Go take a walk and say a prayer from uh, Owen Hart because when you lose someone early uh, like uh, he did or he passed, uh, it's not good. So think of the good times is what I'm saying. Have a good day. Bye.